And yes, the big thing we got to talk about here today is NXT moving to the CW Network. And we talked about this yesterday at the end of the show. And I guess here's what I want to say about it. I'm going to shut the chat down for a little while here. I know people don't like hearing about NXT. So listen, if you don't like the show, that's fine. If you don't want to watch the show, that's fine. But I've been talking about this for a long time now. The show is way better. And the, the fact of the matter is, if you look at AW Dynamite, AW Collision, AW Rampage, WWE Raw, WWE SmackDown, the reality is the show that has seen the biggest improvement in terms of viewership, 18 to 49, 18 to 34, it's NXT. And, you know, people talked about, oh, you know, main roster people on NXT, NXT title on uh, on Raw and SmackDown. And there were a lot of complaints about it, but as we've talked about for a while, there was a reason for that. And that was they were trying to boost the viewership, the demos of NXT because it was a a contract year. And what has happened is we now have a new deal for SmackDown, and we have a new deal for NXT. SmackDown is going to USA, and the thing with SmackDown going to USA is this is a negative in terms of potential viewership of the show. We, we see SmackDown on Fox. It does a certain number, and you put SmackDown on FS1, and it does half. And you put SmackDown on USA, and it's going to do numbers closer to what Raw is doing than what SmackDown is doing. That's just the reality of a network, like a Fox show. I shouldn't say network, because we're going to talk about CW here in a moment. But a Fox show versus a USA network show, they will see a drop in viewership. Now, even though they got a 40% increase moving to the USA network, this did hurt the stock because of the idea that, well, you're you're losing out on potential viewership by going to the USA Network, which is true, okay? Now, let's talk about NXT moving from the USA Network to CW. So, NXT has had tremendous growth over the last year on the USA Network. They are now going to the CW, Okay. Now, even though they're going from a cable network to a network network, you know, I don't see this show doing 2 million viewers. Let's be honest. It's the CW, okay? I believe the CW's, uh, I think their average viewership is around a half million. So, you know, there's a very good chance that NXT is going to uh, jump onto the CW and immediately be one of their highest rated, most watched shows on all of the CW. Now, I expect that they're largely going to do probably very similar numbers. I don't think it's going to be significantly higher than they're doing right now. I also don't think it's going to be significantly lower than they're doing right now. And the reason for that is because another thing that NXT has going for it that we have seen over the last several years, actually, is they do have the most loyal audience. It doesn't matter what else is on television. It doesn't matter what day they're on. It doesn't matter what horrible news or great news occurred or whatever. Their audience finds and watches the show. So I think more than any other show, if they move to a network that their current audience can get, and pretty much everybody, as we talked about, can get the CW, I think that we're largely going to see pretty much the exact same viewership. Now, what did they get for the move to the CW? They got a 70% increase over what they were getting before. 70%. So that's a big jump in revenue for NXT. And, you know, if if they announced that Raw was moving to the CW, I would say, well, you know, that's a negative. If they said that SmackDown was moving to the CW, I would say, yeah, well, that's a negative. But NXT moving to the CW is nothing but a positive. With, a, with, with Raw and SmackDown, 
What you want is the maximum number of eyeballs. Those are your two, in theory, A shows. They're the shows that push the biggest pay-per-views. They're the shows that push the biggest stars. They're the shows that push the biggest storylines. What you want, what would be ideal, is if both of those shows were on Fox. But that's not going to happen. But with NXT, it honestly does not matter how many people watch NXT now that they have a new five-year deal. It'll matter in uh, year five. But right now, for the next four years, it doesn't matter. All that matters is they got a 70% increase to air that show on the CW. And I can't think of one negative to what has happened here. Not one. Unless you're Billy Corgan. But uh, that's the uh, news. They've moved to the CW, and they've still got another year to figure out where Raw is going to go. They've got a year before the Raw deal is up. And at the uh, earnings call yesterday, they talked about you know a lot of different options for what they're going to do with Raw. But, I mean, so far, you know, in terms of, of uh, revenue, I mean, very good news for, for WWE. It didn't, as I noted, help the stock much because of what happened with SmackDown. But uh, I think that this NXT deal is is really a great deal. Yeah, from a business point of view, it absolutely is. I think it was Deadline that said, we don't know what the number is, but it's at least double the $15 million tag that they believe that it was getting now from USA. You're saying a 70% increase. Whatever it is, it is head and shoulders above what anybody else would have paid for NXT. It has to be because that's where it is. And it is broadcast network TV. Unfortunately, the 78 million people that CW could be seen by is not seen by that many. On average, it's actually even much lower than 500,000, Brian. You know, sometimes their top show only peaks around that number. And when that show is Penn and Teller, and when you have shows like Whose Line Is It Anyway, still trotted out there, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what their philosophy is. They have cut all of the shows that made them known because when Nexstar bought this television station, they realized their average viewership is 58 years old. Why are we having, you know, trying to chase Supernatural and Arrow and all of these shows? And they ended up axing all of those shows. And they've decided to invest in sub-licensing the ACC for basketball to be played throughout the winter and, and into the spring. Obviously, football playing now. They have NASCAR, the Xfinity Series. They paid $115 million for the live golf deal, that's like a time barter thing. So they're not even losing anything that way. And they're seemingly hitting their core target. So this is very good for them. It seems to fit in exactly where they want it because, yeah, sure, it might skew their numbers younger, but it is an older, loyal audience that watches NXT. And I think they'll have an easy time following it over to CW. I think, like you, the numbers unless it is inflated by main roster people being on there. I think overall the average is going to dip from where it is, you know, it has been currently here. And But still, again, by the CW standards, that show could do 500,000 people as low as that every single week and still be clearly the number one show that they have, maybe with the exception, uh, exception of sports. So I don't think it'll be that low, but I think from a business point of view, it's really a no-lose because even if you say, okay, some of the eyeballs are taken off of NXT, it's very arguable that, hey, maybe we shouldn't be seeing some of these people anyway. So well, I think it's a win-win. I think the uh, I think the numbers are going to be good. And I know that they've put a lot of main roster people on NXT, and they've had a lot of NXT people on Raw and SmackDown. And that is to try to that's a- achieve what they just off. did here. Yeah. But I, I don't see any reason to stop doing that. I mean, no. we saw this way back in the uh, Ohio Valley days. There is literally zero negative to having main roster stars going down to developmental and helping everybody get better and exposing some of the individuals that they eventually want to bring to the main roster to the main roster and get people an idea of who they are. So anyway, I think it's going to continue. You have Max Caster on Wednesday was giving MGF unwelcome physical groping. Daddy Ass has calling himself Mr. Ass for decades now. And then you have the Iron Savages. All these men want to do, in their own words, is eat their opponents' asses. Yeah. Anthony Bones is the straightest guy in this match. Tony Storm also ate ass. What's going on here? 
Sky Blue has a very um, thick. Thank you. Uh, backside, of course, Tony is the same way. So they had to one up that somehow. Kira Hogan, well, she fits the bill. Kira is running wild, and Tony cuts her off by eating her ass. This is the kinkiest wrestling show I've seen in a long, long time. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.